You might think that we're now uh, done for the task of verifying that all the programs that we can build up from the basic instructions have the unitary property. Because I said this thing, which sounded very correct, which is that you know, uh, if all the basic instructions have the unitary property, then you know, this uh, valid states like always stay valid. And so anything you build up from them will also have the unitary property. Uh, I a little bit slipped something past you there. Uh, and it's true, by the way, that we, valid, we, uh, we checked this for the classical reversible operations and for Hadamard. But I did slip a little something past you there, which is that um, sometimes we perform, let's say, Hadamard A in a situation where there's more than one qubit. Like, you know, maybe we have like three qubits, and then we perform Hadamard A, which is like Hadamard just on the first one. Or we could do Hadamard C, like just on the third one. And so, you know, we'll have like a wider amplitude tree to analyze there. If there's like three qubits, there'll be like maybe eight amplitudes. But like Hadamard is only like operating on like one qubit. So like it doesn't seem clear immediately that still the sum of the squares of the amplitudes doesn't change. If this is like making, if it's a little unclear, like I'm going to check it right now. Um, but I just want to say there is something more to check. And let's check it uh, for a couple of reasons. First, we, we ought to check it to make sure that this... Uh, law of quantum transformations is holding good. And it's also useful to remind yourself how this works sometimes. Like sometimes even I like kind of forget a little bit about, you know, you say, oh, this is the definition of Hadamard. Here's how it operates on one qubit. Or this is the definition of clockwise. Here's how it operates on one qubit. But you got to remember like, yeah, but what if there are more than one qubit? Like then how does it work? Well, the answer is just amplitude trees. Just remember the amplitude trees. But let's, let's do it so that we get a good, uh, we get familiar with it. Okay, so uh, I'll do like the simplest possible next case, which is that like we have two qubits, but we do Hadamard only on one of them. Okay, I mean everything I will say generalizes to you have like any number of qubits, and you do Hadamard on one of them. But let's let's just do two. So okay, let's say you have uh, A and B are two qubits, and they have some state. Uh, and we'll just give letters, again, to all the amplitudes. So like Q, amplitude, on 0, 0, and R, amplitude on 0, 1, and S, amplitude on 1, 0, and T, amplitude on 1, 1. OK, you have two qubits, and somehow, eventually, you get them to like this state. And uh, then you do Hadamard on the first one. Okay, so what's the new state? So you might be like getting like a little tired, like, oh man, he's gonna do like another computation with the amplitude trees, but like we'll we'll get something out of this one, trust me. What's the new state? Okay, so it's gonna be kind of like this, but you know, it'll be wider because we have like two qubits. Um and as we do this one, actually we're gonna maybe stop quite doing it like the 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 amplitude tree way are, are this based on this way. And we're going to try to do it a little bit more based on this slogan. Because this slogan, except for this last line, which is very annoying, this slogan is like somehow much more memorable, I feel, than the actual definition. So let's do that. OK, so we got this. Uh, Incoming state, and I don't know. Maybe there's some hypothetical amplitude tree, and we got uh, to zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one, and the amplitudes with which we got there were Q, R, S, and T. Okay. Now you might say, like, okay, we're doing Hadamard on A. So A is like the first qubit. So we're going to go through all of these. Put in the little tree, you know, this one, what happens here? Okay, zero doesn't change. This zero goes to like zero, some amplitude. This zero goes to one with some amplitude. I guess it's both root a half, root a half. Okay, we can do a list for all of them and like start to multiply and add up. 
But now I want to, like, I don't know, like, shortcut it a little bit. So uh, here's so you, you have to, like, uh, think a little bit to check that, like, what I'm saying is equivalent to what you would get if you did everything all full out. So the way to look at it is like this. You're like, okay, I'm doing how to model in A. That means, like, B is not changing. Okay, B is not changing. And if there's, like, I don't know, 10 qubits, like B, C, D, E, et cetera, B, C, D, E, et cetera, would not be changing. The only thing that's varying is A. Okay? So you kind of want to separate the worlds into, like, um, you want to pair them up based on the B value, the value that's not changing. So here is the world where B is 0. This is, like, B equals 0 world. Okay, and with like a different color, I'll demonstrate the world where B is 1. This is B is like 1. And you should really pair these up in your mind. Okay, so you should really think like, all right, I'm going to kind of pair up these pieces in my mind. Because this is a world where like b is zero, and if there's like um, two qubits b and c, you pair up all the unchanging ones together. So like all the ones where like b equals zero and c equals zero, that's a pair. All the ones where b equals zero and c equals one, that's a pair, etc. So you get it. So you're like, so now like kind of in this like red world, there's basically one qubit again. It's a. It's the first one, the one that we're operating on. And then you're like, yeah, and you just stick zero at the end. But that's not changing. So now it's kind of like this picture, where you have two amplitudes coming in, Q and S. And like you do this operation on it. Well, this would be Q, this would be S. But like you're like, oh, I've got to stick my B equals 0 here. It's just like you annoyingly write 0 everywhere. That's what's going on on this red bit. OK? And similarly, like separately, you'll be like, oh, I'm going to like also focus on this world. This is the world where like b is one, uh, but now it looks like I just have like one qubit that's free that's changing. We got the like, zero and one with the amplitudes r and t. So it really again looks like this picture with like r and t, and it's just you're like yeah, and I like write like one everywhere here one 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 one. Okay, so you can just like do this thing. Well, you can do this thing for every pair, and like you can apply this little slogan to every pair. So I'll do that, but let me first. Maybe write in words what's going on. So when you have multiple qubits, okay. So um, pair up the basic states based on the like unchanging part. Okay, which in this example is um, B. Uh, okay, and then you have like a bunch of pairs. So you have a bunch of just like a piece where like you have the zero and the one in the varying qubit, and then you do the one qubit instruction on each pair. OK, so let's do that. OK, so in this picture, we have uh, the pairs. Uh, start with like the b equals 0 pair. That's the red one. And what are the amplitudes coming in? Well, it's like Q and S. This is like on 0, on 1. Sort of like on A equals 0 and A equals 1. OK. And then we can use this slogan to remember what happened. So there's going to be like a new amplitude on 0 and a new amplitude on 1. And the new amplitude on 0 will just be the sum of the two old amplitudes, and the new amplitude on 1 will just be the difference. 
Except that we have to do this like stupid root two, root half thing. So like, you know, maybe using the slogan. Okay, the the amplitude's coming out, if you will. Well, we'll have a Q plus S times this root half on zero and Q minus on one times root half. Okay, and this will be a part of the final state. I say a part because then you'll be like, oh, this is the world where like everything else is B equals zero. So like in the final final state, You'd be like, yeah, yeah, there's like also like a zero here and a zero here. But I'll put that in. Well, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, now let's do the other part. Do the green part. This is the world where b equals one. Okay, we'll do the same analysis. So here, the amplitude's in, because here we got um, amplitude r on 0 and t on 1. So it's like r on 0, a equals 0, t on a equals 1. And by this uh, slogan, you see that the amplitude's coming out. It's just r plus t and r minus t, basically. r plus t times this root half. r minus t times this down root half. And that's on, you know, 0 and on 1. And again, we can remember, like, oh, this, it's really 0, and then, like, the b was 0. Sorry, the b was 1. Okay, and therefore, we can put it all together and get the final state, which I'll write. Uh, and notice that, like, um, you know, when you're kind of, like, collating this all together, all these pieces will always be different because, like, they have different uh, B parts. So they'll never be the same, and you won't need to collate anything. So kind of, like, all these calculations are happening separately. Okay, so I'll just write it out, the final state. is, uh, well, like Q plus S on 0, 0 times the stem root half. Q minus on um, 1, 0, kind of writing them in a slightly unusual order, R plus T on 1, one sorry, 1, 0, R minus T on 1, 1. Okay, phew, we did it. It seemed a little elaborate, yeah? Oh, thank you. So used to writing one zero first. Yeah, they're now like in a little bit of an out of order, um, but you know, that's okay. Okay, so if you remember, like one reason we were doing this was I was like, oh, we should still check that like the sum of the squares and the amplitudes is one. You know, this should also be unitary. And, uh, you know, it wasn't as obvious as it was before when we just squared these things and add them up. But actually, it's true because of this situation. So you see, like, we kind of did, like, Hadamard on, like, this piece, had Q and S coming in, and we got to this piece, which had, well, these same numbers with Q and S instead of X and Y here. And we know, by the calculation we did before, that, like, you know, this piece has total squared amplitude... It's exactly like the calculation we did before. It's Q squared plus S squared. Q squared plus S squared. Okay? Now, Q and S squared, sorry, Q squared plus S squared is not necessarily one. It's probably not one because Q and S are like only a piece of the original state. But um, sort of the fact that you go from Q and S to these two numbers, that didn't depend on Q squared plus S squared equaling one. That was just like what you get when you do the amplitude trees. And uh, this piece, for the same reason, uh, has total squared amplitude r squared plus t squared. OK, 
okay, so this piece's total squared amplitude was preserved, and the other piece's total squared amplitude was preserved. So like the total final squared amplitude is uh, Q squared plus S squared plus R squared plus T squared. Okay, and I'll put like a check mark that verifies that this was indeed a unitary transformation as we expected, because if we started with a valid state with one unit of squared amplitude, Q squared plus R squared plus S squared plus T squared equals one, then we also ended with like one unit of squared amplitude. Any questions about this? Okay, so we'll really see that like this is like a bit of a more enjoyable way to do computations when Hadamard is involved. You kind of like take all your amplitudes on all the states, and whenever you do like a Hadamard, you kind of like group them together into little pairs, where in the pairs of basic states, like there's only one position where you have a difference, like a zero and a one. And you kind of do this slogan on each of these pairs, and that's how you get the new uh, uh, state. Okay, so hopefully I've, you're now maybe fully convinced that uh, indeed, like all the operations, the basic operations we do, don't change the total squared amplitude and they're unitary and uh, that's all good. So we can, uh, all right, let's go ahead and uh, actually do some stuff. Like we're over like the, the, the basic definitions of how quantum works.